All right, so here we go. Um, let's move this over a little bit. There we go. All right. So now we've got this working. So underneath my, oh, I was going to talk about the brushes I've got. I've got, um, I want to talk about my filbert brushes. I've got a couple of filbert brushes. So filbert brushes are kind of flat brushes, see? But the tips of them are, are rounded. It's called a cat's tongue brush in a lot of other languages. I really like that name. Um, I've got these for most of my painting. I've got this one that's a little bit larger for kind of smoothing things out and blending them. And then I've got two round brushes for line work. All right. So you can also use flat brushes instead of filberts. I like filberts a little bit better. They're a little bit softer. Um, and you do want to have probably a, a thinner round brush for line work. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I've got a glass palette here. Uh, glass palettes are really nice. If you have a scrap piece of glass, you can basically just tape some paper to the back. Gray paper works the best, but it doesn't necessarily have to be gray. And then you can use it as a palette. And the nice thing about it is when it gets too much paint on it, you can just scrape the paint off. So I'm going to put a little bit of white paint there. Put a little bit of black paint. And I've got some retarder I'm going to mix in. The retarder slows the drying time for the paint. So it's really nice when you're trying to get like gradients and nice transitions. Ooh, this black paint is not in good shape. That's right. Squeeze out a little retarder too. Can't necessarily see all those, but that's all right. I've got black and white and retarder. Um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm actually going to use my big one. I want to have my brushes. I want to have my paint, any mediums that I have. So I want a little black, a little white. If you don't have black, you can mix together a dark color. You can use a blue. You can mix a blue and a red. You can mix a blue and a green. Try to make like a dark color that you can use as a substitute for your black. Try to get it as close to black as you can. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be black. Uh, it's all right if it's just a dark tone you mix yourself. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of a middle gray. So if you have... Um, a palette knife, you can use a palette knife to mix. That's a uh, better practice than using a brush, but I'll show you how to do it with the brush too, just in case you need it. So I'm gonna mix a medium gray. I want it to be like a three on my value scale. And I'm gonna add some retarder to it. I want this gray to be thin so that when I paint with it, I can still see what's underneath. I can still see the drawing underneath. So I can kind of test it by moving it around on the palette. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move to kind of step two of my painting process where I lay in the shadows. So I'm going to use my middle gray. I'm going to start laying in shadows. Let's see if I can see through it. Not really, not quite thin enough. So I'm going to try to, there we go. So my paint's thin enough. I just need to make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. You can see through still. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so now I'm going to come in with my gray. I'm going to try to Lock in some of my shadows here. So remember, we want to separate everything in the image into shadow shapes and non-shadow shapes. So everything that is a like three value, a middle value, and darker, I'm going to paint in right now. And you might notice that it gets a little darker as I get the as the graphite mixes in, that's okay. 
just looking for those shadow shapes. And ideally, I want it to be thin enough there we go, that I can see the drawing underneath still. I can come back later and get my dark shadows underneath here. So I'm using a pretty big brush right now. If I need to get in and get some detailed areas, I can get a larger brush to use, or a smaller brush, sorry. Say things that make sense. I think I'm gonna leave a little bit of space right there. And I can add a little more water to this if it's too uh, thick. I want it to be nice and washy to start out with. So as long as I'm applying some tone to the paper here, I'm good. And my paint over on my pad is real wet, okay? So I want to keep that wet too. And the nice thing about paint is if I go too dark or too light or I don't have the right tone, I can paint over it. Or the nice thing about acrylics, I should say. So I don't have to be too nervous about this. I can fix things if I make mistakes. I've got a nice, wet, soupy patch here. Okay. So we really want to concentrate on putting paint on slowly and building it up slowly. So we want thin layers. So again, try to keep your paint nice and thin. If it's going on too thick and covering up your drawing, try adding a little water to it and stretching it out like this, really getting it kind of all over the paper um, so that you can get all those shadow tones. And this way. Paint all of this in. So one of the things you maybe missed, after I mixed my paint, I really wiped it off on my paper towel here so that I don't have my paintbrush loaded up with too much paint. I want to think about this the same way I think when I'm watercoloring. I want to kind of apply the paint slowly to start off. It's the same sort of idea. So you can see my drawing through my painting as I'm building this up. And this is why it's really important that we have kind of a complete, uh, fully rendered drawing to start with. We want to use our skill, our ability to draw, and we want to transfer that over to the painting. So in order for that to happen, we have to be able to paint light enough for us not to cover up everything we've already done. Oops. A little loose piece of red paint that I don't need right now. Okay. 
All right. Give me a little bit right here. I've got some more for later. I think this will do it for now. All right, so now I've got my shadows kind of blocked in. Um, so now I'm going to kind of go to my darker shadows. So I'm going to mix and arrange here. The way I'm usually going to do this is I'll have one filbert brush that I use for warm colors and one for cool colors. In this case, since we're just black and white, I'll have one that I use for like lighter colors and one that I use for darker colors. And I'll kind of um, mix those together. Or sorry, uh, blend them together with that uh, bigger brush that I had. So I'm going to add a little bit of black here and a little bit of white over here. Kind of add a little bit of a gradient in between. Alright, I'm going to clean my brush off a little bit. Uh, maybe add a little bit of retarder in there throughout. Alright, black. Alright, now I'm going to go in and start picking out some of this darker stuff. All right, so there's my line there. So I'm going to go in and soften it a little bit. So same idea as before. I'm going to have one brush that we use to apply pigment and then another brush that we use to maybe move the pigment around. I'm actually going to have three, so I'm going to have one that I apply dark pigment with, one that I apply light pigment with, and one that I use to smooth and soften. I'm going to kind of work this eye, then I'm going to move over to the other eye. I'll move around the features a little bit more, try to get all the real dark spots. All right. So there's our pupil. That's going to be super dark, right? We've got some kind of shade coming down from here. So again, we want to keep the same steps as when we're drawing. We want to have that lay in. We don't need that anymore because we've got like a complete drawing on there, right? And then after the lay in, we want to have the shadows. And then we want to divide our shadows up. So we're going to like dark shadows and medium dark shadows and medium shadows. So I kind of mixed a slightly lighter gray for the outside of the iris here. I'm going to mix that in a little bit. So I'm going to let that dry. I'll come back and add highlights later on. Okay. Now I'm adding like darker shadow spots. So I can kind of dab a little bit of pigment on there and then blend it in if I want to get like a gradient if I want that transition. So if I want a gradient sort of transition, so I'm mixing a dark gray. It's not quite black, but it's pretty dark. So if I want a gradient transition like right here, I'll paint in the darkest spot. Like this edge right here. Okay, and then I'll come in and pull away. 
And if it's too stiff, I can add a little bit of water to it, and that'll help loosen it up. I don't want it to be sopping. If it gets too wet, that's going to be a problem. But I can add a little bit of water to it. go darker. All right. Uh, let's work on the other eye. Well, actually, let's get that eyebrow. I can lighten that up a little bit later on, but for now, I'll just go nice and dark with it. There we go. Go for kind of a medium dark. There, that's about right. What are we gonna get? Forgot. <laughs> oh, dang it. Um. Oh yeah. So the Filbert's a pretty nice brush. It's versatile. So I can like hold it one way and get pretty wide strokes. But if I hold it the other way, like sideways, I can cut pretty fine lines with it. So it's really handy brush for just your general painting. I'm just gonna pull a little bit of pigment into the eye here. Now, if I want to get eyelashes in here, I can use the side of my filbert, or I can come in with a round brush and get finer lines. Just kind of suggesting them. Then we'll go over and soften that again in a little bit. Um, I think this value should go a little darker here. A little darker here. All right, so I'm gonna cut my little line up here. So we practice painting in black and white first because we've only got two variables, right? We've got light and dark. And that's complicated enough for now. Uh, when we get to color, you've got light and dark still. But you also have the color, the chroma, right? And we also have the saturation. So there's a lot more variables when we get into color. So we want to make sure that we can do this, just black and white first. little bit of tone here. I'm just going to dab my dirty brush on there. So for thinning your paint, you can use medium. Medium will keep the body of the paint pretty thick while also allowing you making it a little more transparent. So that's really useful if you want to like do any glazing or anything like that. Glazing is where we try to add a coat that's thin enough for us to see what's underneath it. So kind of like what we're doing right now. So if we want to add any glazing, the medium's really nice because it keeps it thick. It doesn't let it get too watery. 
Um, so what I've got is a medium called Retarder, which slows the drawing time. Put it on your list. If you want to pick some up, it's really handy for anytime you need to make like a gradient and have smooth transitions. So if you're trying to paint portraits and you want them to be like pretty smooth, the retarder is really useful for that because it'll keep things wet a lot longer. The acrylic paint dries really fast, especially in a drier climate like this. That's right, kitten. No, 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 no. Gosh, darn it. Well, now my slideshow's gone. Here we are. Kitten got on my keyboard and really messed me up there. All right. Um, yeah, let's keep going. What is it? So let's uh, let's finish up one of these eyes. So I would probably work through and get all my dark areas like this, and then move on to my uh, light areas and put in my my medium light tone and my highlights. Um, and kind of just work through everything in sequence like that. But I want to kind of release you for async pretty soon. So let's just walk through doing the rest of this eye. Okay. So um, I've got most of my shadow tones in here. I think they're pretty solid. So I'm going to actually switch to my light tones. So with your brushes, when you stop using a brush, you want to swish it around in your water and wipe it out on a paper towel like this, and then you can set it down. Uh, you ideally don't want to leave your brushes just sitting in your water because it's going to ruin them. <laughs> so you want your bristles to be uh, wet, but you want your brush to be like sitting on your table. So you need to be really careful if you're doing a long session that your brushes don't dry out. But you also don't want them to be soaking in the water because it's going to undo the glue. Okay, so I'm mixing like a medium gray. Um, I'm going to add some retarder to it just to make it smooth and make it dry slowly. I'll add this right here. So I'm going to be using kind of all my different tones to kind of get a nice gradient here. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so I'm painting all this my kind of medium light gray. And now I'm going to go and get a little bit of white. And I'm going to put that where I see the highlight happening. I'm going to wipe my brush off so that it's kind of cleaner. And I'm going to kind of pull these edges a little bit to make the transition a little smoother. So I'm just kind of blurring the borders of my highlight into the rest of the work. All right, I've got another kind of highlight right here. I'm gonna dab on where my highlight is. I'm gonna clean my brush off. Actually, I'll clean that on the palette so that I'm not wasting paint. And I'll start pulling that. I've got a little more paint here than I want. So I'm gonna take a little bit of it and dab it over here. Pull the transition over. Alright, that looks pretty good, but I want it to be smoothed out, so I'm going to make sure my blending brush is clean, because I've been using dark colors. So I'm going to make sure it's clean, and then I'm going to kind of blend all this together a little bit. Alright, so then I've got a pretty decent 
upper lid happening. That's good for a first pass. All right, now I'm going to go back into my medium gray. Mix a little bit more of that. That's probably pretty good. Add it under the eyelid here. So what I want is like a wet fluid film right there. Okay, I'm gonna continue this down. The reason I want it to be wet is when I add my highlight, I want my highlight to be able to move around on there a little bit. So now I'm gonna add my highlight. I'm just gonna hit the like lightest portions, the real highlight here. I'm gonna have to hit that a couple times probably. Now I'm going to wipe my brush off, and I'm going to start blending those in. That's right, kitten. Don't get on my computer again. I don't want you to. Please don't. No. I'll go back in with my... Black is starting to get dried up. Okay. Awesome. It's just kind of going back and forth of kind of unifying and deunifying everything. I'm going to blend that back in a little bit. Yeah, so that's the idea basically. You want to go in with a little bit of medium gray, apply it to an area. I guess this would be like a light medium. Apply that to the whole light area, and you can even overlap some of the borders a little bit. And then Get off of the keyboard, kitty. A bad kitty. Oops. And then apply a little bit of white to it. Just hit the highlights. So this is where my highlight is, right? This is the lightest area. So that's where I'm going to put the paint. And then we'll mix it in with our other brush. Does that make sense? I hope so. Let me know if it doesn't. Get this nose here. Means that I flipped away when I was painting. All right. So, yeah, that's kind of the idea. Any questions? So you're basically going to work through the whole thing this way. I would say like do all your shadows first, then do all your deep shadows, then do all your like 
medium lights and your highlights. Kind of showed you a different way so I could show you all the steps, but that's the way I'd do it. Just do everything one step at a time. All right, there we go. bit of reflective light on this side. Bouncing off of here. All right, so there's a thing you have to remember with oil painting that is fat over lean. So the idea is that you put your thicker, uh, greasier, oilier paints on top of your thinner, washier paints. And with oil painting, that's really important because if you don't do it right, your paintings can crack like the top layer will dry before the layers underneath it and that'll cause it to crack. Um, but it's a really good policy for acrylic painting as well. We want to lay down thin layers, thin like washy layers first and then transition to thicker layers as we get further into the painting. All right. Anytime you get up from painting, you want to swish your brushes around in your water and wipe them off on your paper towel. So that's kind of the idea. 